Hello and welcome to Collect the Thoughts, the show where I collect my thoughts on a video game and today we'll be talking about Final Fantasy XII, probably one of the most controversial and infamous entries in the Final Fantasy series and that's saying a lot. And I'll be honest, I agree that this is a weird one and that I'm not a huge fan of it, but let's get into it I guess. I want to start with the story, I think just to kind of wash it out of the way first because it's fine it's probably the best part of the game but it's also just it's dune which to be fair final fantasy already lends itself to a lot with its fantasy sci-fi setting but here adding that and the desert setting with the war and even a spice like thing with the magic side they're not the same thing but the idea that there's just this very powerful commodity that only exists here and has very magical powers it's like you know it's obviously not a ripoff but there's just so many little similarities that it's hard not to make that comparison that being said final fantasy 12 does lack in a way that dune didn't which was character development by the way, I'm talking about the book, I don't know about the movie, uh, I'm definitely not talking about the David Lynch movie, this is being recorded before the new movie comes out, just putting that out there. But anyways, Final Fantasy XII does suffer from maybe having some of the worst main characters. I was just never invested in them, and it's not like the game had time to develop them, I spent tens of hours with these characters. And I could not tell you a defining personality trait for half of them. And I think this is also made worse by how drawn out the story feels. Once again, I feel like there's about 10 hours between cutscenes. You watch a cutscene and then you go, oh yeah, sure, I'm gonna watch the resolution to whatever just happened in like 10 hours when I'm leveled up enough and I've somehow found where the hell the game wants me to go, which is another thing. There are several parts of this game where and i guess we're gonna start talking about the gameplay and its designs there's a lot of times in this game where the game just kind of expects you to know where things are when the game is not intuitive at all it's hard enough that the places in this game all have weird names that mean nothing to me and i'm not gonna remember because they're also not particularly memorable location they're just deserts and sometimes forests sometimes an icy place you know the deals not particularly the most memorable locations and the game kind of hopes you remember them now go south of poopy face and you know you look at the map and there's no poopy face and you don't know what to do the levels feel borderline like mazes at times and you just don't really understand why maybe it's to give it a more realistic feeling but you know we're in a fantasy setting, I think that's kind of out of the window. Also, I think what adds a lot to this, and it's a bit mitigated here in this modern remaster, the Zodiac Age, which is the time sped up, because these places, again, are huge, and so, you know, the ability to sped up things just makes it a lot easier. Even though it doesn't really solve that you're gonna have a bunch of fights between every destination. But at the end of the day, the real kicker is of course, and this being the most controversial piece of this game, the gameplay. Because you not so much play Final Fantasy XII as you set up Final Fantasy XII to play itself in a lot of ways. To understand this, we have to also understand that this was during the time when Final Fantasy was leaving the turn-based RPG genre to go into the action RPG one. But, you know, with a lot of growing pains. And I would say that Final Fantasy XII is one of them. Kind of this system where the game just kind of plays itself and you kind of just give it small guides along the way. I think the worst part is how it is set up. With the Gambit system, which I feel incentivizes you just to spend a bunch of time in the menus min-maxing. So you can basically configure the AI to play by itself while you only give minor input. And I'll be honest and say at this point that this is something that a lot of people might enjoy and they're totally right in doing so. But I personally really did not click with this system. I was just bored out of my mind for most of it. Despite the times 2 and then later on times 4 
speed up system. I mean later on as in I adapted so much to the times 2 that I just ended up playing in times 4 because I would get bored of times 2 being too slow which I know is not particularly the greatest thing to say but it kind of happened. Regardless I just think that the system in Final Fantasy 12 would then be done better in games like Xenoblade Chronicles that I think put a lot more engagement on the player and also avoid that min-maxing of the gambit system. And so I just kind of end up being bored while playing this. It was very hard for me to actually finish this game because I would sit down and play it and then I would just not feel like playing it anymore. I just felt like I wasn't actually doing anything and the progress felt very minimal as well. That's why you're getting this review in October. Despite me having uploaded gameplay footage of this game back in May and trust me that I had been playing this game even before that and in all honesty doing this review was kind of the main push for me to finally finish it to come back to it time and time after again and just kind of cheap away at it and the game did not make it easy leveling up in this game is very slow and towards the end of the game there's basically this moment where the game goes you better go level up because you know the end of the game is kind of hard and you know I try to do that and the side quests are just so boring it's fetch quest hell I just don't want to be doing this and it sucks because I do think there is a crowd for this game I can see how there's people who enjoy this it's so easy for me to go yeah I see why people like this but I just could not connect with it and I think a lot of it is regardless of the gameplay. Like I said, the map design and the mission design is often very annoying. The main quest is fine. It's mostly, you know, go to this place and this place will have a dungeon that's kind of cool. And boss designs that are pretty cool. Actually, as we get into the graphics now, I do think that this game looks amazing. I mean... The deserts, the ice places, they might be generic locations, but they look amazing regardless. There's something about this art style that just pops out in a positive way. I think despite all of its problems with the design, it is a world that feels legitimately alive. And there's almost like this very realistic feeling of living in a place where, you know, there's a war going on, but, you know, people's lives are also still going on. And I think it's pretty interesting in that way. If anything, I would say that my only problem with this game is mostly in character design and some enemy design that feels a bit over designed. And I think maybe that this graphic engine just wasn't quite ready for that. Characters' faces look weird. Also, a lot of characters that have a lot of detail can feel a bit two dimensional, and I think that's a limitation of this engine and the console it was originally released on. And of course, how despite, and I'm saying this a lot, but it is legitimately one of the biggest problems with this game, how it just kind of feels like a maze. Which, you know, maybe it's on purpose. It's realistic. Real life is a maze. How about that? But regardless, graphics wise, it looks good great i think still i think for me it is very much the best part of this game still it was the part that attracted me to play this game despite me looking at the gameplay and thinking wow this looks like an mmo i don't want to play this and i was right it was in a lot of ways the pushing force which also disappointed a little bit because most of the scenarios are just generic forest and desert and things like that but that's not to say that there is no creativity i do think that it looks really good when you're inside a ship or inside a dungeon or temple inside the cities it looks really great what i'm trying to say is if you're inside a place it probably looks pretty good but when you're out in the open it does have a tendency to look a bit generic i think Regardless though, the other piece that also serves to sell this world in a lot of ways, the soundtrack also fails a bit here. It is good music, but because of how the game is set up, you will be mostly listening to this one song for most of the whole game. And my god, is this song gonna become ingrained in your brain and you're gonna hate it for that. It's not even a bad song, but it's not a song I want to listen for 50 hours, that's for sure. 
And it's also the song that's probably gonna be playing at the parts of the game you're having the least fun when you're grinding or doing these side missions that are not particularly good. But getting back to the gameplay, I actually forgot to mention something very important, which is the job system. And I think this could have been a cool thing, allowing your characters to be whatever job you want them to be, you know, you could have your main character be a white mage and focus on healing and having, you know, your party members be the DPS in that way. But it's also clear that the game doesn't want you to do that and in another way, it's also very easy to mess up and give the wrong jobs to the wrong people. To the point where I think this game would have been better off by people just having jobs assigned to them from the beginning. It's clear that at some point there had to have been just predefined jobs for each one, especially since they already have their own predefined stats that will grow in a certain way. So while you can make your main character a white mage, his magic power is never gonna be too high so it would be kind of stupid. And so what can just kind of happen is that the early game you kind of just choose poorly and end up kind of creating a bad situation for yourself. Especially since you can eventually pick a second job but that's insanely deep into the game at that point. This is one of those things where I would just recommend you look up a guide if you don't want to waste 50 hours of your life. Just saying. Regardless though, you know, I think for me it is very much a situation of what could have been. I enjoy games like Xenoblade Chronicles, so it is not out of the question for me to enjoy a game like this, but I think that this one goes a bit too far into maybe that MMO territory, I don't know, I'm not big into MMOs, but regardless, regardless of what it is, this game feels a bit too passive for me. I enjoy having a bit more interaction during my gameplay, I guess it would be a way to put it. But also, you know, I just want better side missions that kind of make me interested in this world more than just go grab whatever item for whoever. I may rag on the gameplay bit a lot, but it is a situation where even if this had like, I don't know, Final Fantasy VII Remake gameplay, it still wouldn't be particularly my favorite Final Fantasy game. It is like a big mix of things and not everything works. And what does work is also pushed down at the end of the day by other things. Which means that I could never really enjoy it. And for those reasons, I am giving Final Fantasy 12 a 4 out of 10. But you might enjoy it. You know, in terms of recommendations, I think there's a chance you might actually like it a lot more than I did. And that a lot of the problems I had with it will probably not bother you. I think the main things to note here is do you enjoy MMOs and do you enjoy playing MMOs by yourself which I know is a very specific thing but there's probably people out there. Also maybe you enjoy min maxing a lot which this game has a lot of so that's another thing you might enjoy and you won't mind the fetch questing. I think those are the main things that if you enjoy those bits of the game you actually suddenly really like this game which is why at the end of the day it is so controversial. It is a type of gameplay that is not for everybody and it was most definitely not for me but I'm glad people can enjoy it. Before I played this game it was very weird trying to understand the public perception on it because some people legitimately talk about it like it's the best Final Fantasy game and other people talk about it like it's the plague. But at the risk of being a centrist, I will say that even if I liked this gameplay, I still wouldn't think it was one of the best Final Fantasy games. Which I already made this point with the Final Fantasy VII remake bit, so let's not ramble on, especially since the review is already over. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed watching. Probably not, this was a bit of a weird one. Regardless though, please consider subscribing, liking, commenting, all the things you can do for free here on YouTube. And regardless of that, I hope you're having a good day. Goodbye.